Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Megan Camel and this is Megan Stuff. So recently I came across a video about flint napping. Now if you don't know what flint napping is, it's basically creating tools out of stone. And this is obviously way before we had metal to make our tools out of. Mostly the stone was used to make knife blades or arrowheads for hunting. I found the video very interesting and captivating, so I decided that I want to give it a try myself. Now when I say recently, I mean pretty much two days ago. So my knowledge about the craft and the tools needed to carry it out is very limited. Now before I go ahead and actually try and do something like this, the first thing I need to do obviously is slap together a couple of tools in order to do it. Now as I said, I don't know a great deal as of yet, but I'm going to do my best to run you through the basic tools needed for flint napping. So initially to take a big rock and start breaking it down into smaller flakes that you can use for tools, um, it's called spalling. And for the most part the tool used for this is just another rock, or also known as a hammerstone. So once you've got a flake that's a good size to start working with, then it's time to start shaping it. And I'm guessing this will be called napping. And there's a bunch of different tools that people use for this. Some people will also use a hammerstone for this stage. Another more traditional way of doing it is using bone or deer antlers as a hammer to strike the rock. And a more modern way of doing it is using what's called a billet, or also known as a copper bopper. Now all of the tools that I mentioned here fall under the category of direct percussion. But there is also another method of working which is called indirect percussion where people use what is called an ishi stick which is basically clamped inside the back of the knee allowing you to use both hands to work the rock. Then basically you just position the rock on the tip of the ishi stick and you use either a hammer or a club to beat the ishi stick which means basically you're beating the stick instead of beating the rock um, hence the term indirect percussion. So another tool that is also essential in flint napping is a grinding stone. Now you can use pretty much anything for this. You can use a bare stone or you can use an old broken grinding wheel as long as it has fairly rough abrasive properties. Now once you beat your rock into a rough shape or also known as a preform, then basically it's time to move on to pressure flaking. So as with percussion there are also different tools used for this. Traditionally people would also use bone or antlers which were sharpened at the tip and more recently people use pressure flakers with copper tips on the front. Now depending on how you pressure flake, some people will pressure flake onto a leather pad on their legs and other people will pressure flake in their hand. In that case they use um, what's called a pressure flaking pad or just a piece of leather that's rolled up um, that they can flake into their hands. So I apologize if that was a little bit too much information, but I found it very interesting and I hope that at least some of you would find it interesting as well. So I'm obviously not going to make a whole set of all the tools. So let me discuss what I am going to be making. So I plan on making three different sizes of copper headed billets, as well as two different pressure flakers. One with a sharper rounded tip and then one with a flat tip, almost like a flat head screwdriver, which I'll hopefully be using for notching and stuff like that. In terms of a grinding stone, I've already managed to find a broken grinding stone at a local hardware store, which they thankfully gave to me for free. I haven't decided yet how I'm going to be doing my pressure flaking, but I think I might make a pressure flaking pad out of leather, which I may or may not use, and I do have a whole bunch of scraps of leather that I can use for my leg leather. I was planning on making an Ishi stick, but I'm just not sure if I'm going to use that. I first want to see how far I can get with these few tools that I'm going to make right now. So without any further ado, let's get started. So the only copper bar stock I had was a 35mm and a short piece of 25 so I went out and I bought a 20mm and a 30mm and I ended up only using the 20, 25 and the 30. So I'm starting here with the smallest one, the 20mm and obviously I first got to cut it down to a manageable length and then I can move over to the lathe. Now let me just say that copper is definitely a nightmare to machine. Um, from what I can tell you need really sharp tools and a lot of skill and I most definitely have neither. The actual machining wasn't too bad but I ran into a whole lot of problems when I started drilling out the recesses in the back of these caps. Uh, the larger the drill bits got the more I found my machine getting bogged down and eventually I even had drill bits getting stuck inside the copper. You'll see here in a minute that eventually I started using a cutting fluid and I must say that helped a little bit but uh, not much. 
I started with an 8mm and then moved up to a 10, a 12 and eventually a 16 to get the hole big enough to where I could fit my boring bar in there to um, increase the diameter of the hole. That 16mm drill bit gave me endless issues. Even though I sharpened it a couple of times it didn't really make much of a difference. Here is that 16mm I mentioned and this video definitely doesn't bring across uh, the amount of struggles that I went through getting these holes drilled out. Yeah, you see me trying to part the piece off and my machine and my tool was just not having it so eventually I resorted to lobbing it off with the hacksaw. Now I'm just facing off the end that I cut and then finally you'll see me using a file to add a slight round over to the edge. So this was the smaller of the three billets and once I was done with this I had to do exactly the same with the 25 and the 30 millimeter. So to save a bit of time, I went ahead and I cut together a quick montage of me doing that. So once I finished all three pieces, I quickly chucked each of them up in my wood lathe just to give them a quick sanding as the machining didn't leave a really good finish. So next it was time to make the bits for the pressure flakers. Now here you see me turning it out of an 8mm aluminium round bar. Initially I wanted to make it out of copper as well but the thinnest copper that I had was the 20mm. Um, I tried one piece where I turned it down to about 8mm um, but I ended up ruining the piece and instead of going through that whole exercise again I decided to just go with the uh, aluminium. The thin end is the actual bit and the long thicker end is the part that will actually be glued into the handle. I left a bit of a shoulder in between them but that was mainly just for aesthetics. As you can see that machining left quite a mess. 
So now that all the hardware is made, it's time to move on to the handles. And for all the handles, I ended up using teak simply because I have a whole bunch of it lying around. First I'll cut it up into rough square blanks uh, to allow me to chuck it up in the lathe. Okay, all chucked up, let's get turning. Here I'm just using a set of calipers to mark the width of the head which I'll use to constantly check the size of my piece while I'm turning it. So here I'm just quickly facing off the end and after that I'll start measuring and marking out for the tenon that I have to turn which will fit into the head of the billet. As you can see, I left the handle a little bit thicker than the head, but that will be sanded down once uh, everything has been glued up. I'd rather make it too big than too small, because you can always take material off, but you can never put it back again. Next time, I'm just adding a bit of shape to the handle, which is obviously not necessary, but I thought it would look nice and also feel a little bit more comfortable in the hand. Okay, that's one handle done and I went ahead and I turned the rest of them off camera. So now that all the bullets are done, it's time to move on to the handles for the pressure flakers. Now these will be made pretty much the same except instead of turning a tenon on the end, I have to drill a recess or a mortise into the end into which the bits are going to be glued in. Okay, so that's one handle down, and once again, I did the other one off camera. So here I'm just cutting in a couple of notches into the tenon just to give the epoxy something to grab onto.
Okay, so now all the pieces are glued up. Uh, it's time to do some final sanding. Uh, I started out with an 80 grit and I rounded it off with a 120 grit. Now I'm just giving it a quick wipe down and then I decided to go with uh, boiled linseed oil as a finish for the handles. So while the handles are off drying I decided to go ahead and get started on the pressure flaking pad. So for this I decided to go with a nice stiff hide and then I used a 6mm MDF as a base for the pad. So now that the pressure flaking pad is glued up, I set it aside and decided to move on to making the leg leather. Now, I don't know what the proper name for that is, but that's just basically the leather you put over your leg while you're busy napping. I decided to make two different sizes, one larger one that I can just drape over my leg and then a smaller one that I can move around on top of that on which I can do the napping, um, which will make it easier for me to discard flakes. So once the glue on the pressure flaking pad was dry, I went ahead and I cleaned up the edges on the bandsaw, followed with a bit of sandpaper just to uh, smooth it out a bit. Okay, so the final thing left to do is to shape the tips of the pressure flakers. Now I did the bulk of the removal on the belt sander off camera, but I wanted to finish up the shaping with a hammer and files just so that I could work hard on the tips a little bit. Okay, there we go guys, that's the end of this video. Um, I really wanted to shoot some footage of me actually using the tools and maybe even making uh, my first point. But this video is already terribly long as it is, so I decided against it. 
but rest assured one of my future videos will definitely be of me making my first point so as for the tools i'm extremely happy with how they turn out i think they look really great uh, now the only thing is to see how well they work so with all that said once again thank you very much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it if you did go ahead and hit that like button if you know of anyone else who is looking to get into flint napping go ahead and share this video with them and as always till next time keep making stuff